This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this application, we have a few different features. We have an authentication solution with device that you can sign in or sign up. And we also have a few different stimulus controllers going on. We have the default hello world, but then we also have something where we can start typing in and it'll show us the number of characters remaining. And so as we are developing our application, tests are an important part of it. Typically, as we develop, we have the browser open and we're testing out our application. However, that doesn't always cover in situations where we are changing something, but then not testing other aspects of the application to see if it affected them. So in this episode, we're going to look at some automated testing. And the specific things that I want to test are going to be the stimulus controllers, but we're also going to look at testing the device setup. And device isn't something that I typically test in and of itself. However, I will test my implementation of it. So I'll make sure that a user is able to sign in and they're able to sign up. And I also want to test my simple stimulus controller, as well as this a little bit more complicated one. And the controversial part here is that the easiest way, in my opinion, to do this is through system tests. They are capybara tests that's included in Rails, but they are much slower than your standard unit tests. So I won't have a full test coverage of the system tests, but instead I'll test the interactivity elements that I really care about, as well as a happy path. And I consider the happy path for acceptance tests really the things that are most critical in the application. If these features were not working, then the users would deem the application unusable. And another important note, if I just run the bin rails test, that's going to run the test suite for this application. And you'll see that there's only one test currently. So this is not running the system test by default. Instead, I have to add the colon system, and then it'll run the system test. It'll launch the browser and it'll start clicking through all of the different elements in my test. So you can see it's running through really fast. And compared to a unit test, this is actually pretty slow. But if our application doesn't have too many of the system tests, then it won't matter too much. But also, we don't have to run the system tests on every merge. You could have something where in your CI CD pipeline, before it does a production deploy, it'll run the system test. Or you can make, whenever it's getting merged to the main or master branch, that it also runs the system test. But the system tests aren't something that I usually run manually. Instead, I usually run them in my CI, but I'll also set a flag, like a CI is equal to true, so when I run the system test, I don't have to worry about the browser loading them up. So it's going to run in a headless version. And one important thing that I really care about when I'm running my tests is reliability. I do not like flaky tests, which basically means that the tests will intermittently fail depending on situations, whether it's the time of day, the day of the month, or some other kind of race condition where a previous test ran because it doesn't consistently run them all in the same order. So in this episode, we're going to look at my configuration on how I set up the system tests. And the last episode that I did on Capybara tests was in Rails 5. So a lot has changed in my workflow that we'll see in this episode. So we're going to start off the application with a very basic device setup, as well as these two stimulus controllers. The two stimulus controllers are the hello and the character counter. We simply have a text area specifying a max length. And then we have a display for the number of characters remaining. These controllers are very simple, where the hello controller is the default from a Rails application where we're just changing the text content of the element to hello world. And the character counter is doing a little bit of stuff, but our focus isn't really the intricate details, 
of the stimulus controller as we are just wanting to test the interactivities of them. So we can come to our application, I'll refresh the page, and you'll see that we have our hello world, and we also have that there are 280 characters remaining, and as we type or copy and paste something in here, we'll see it update. We'll first start out with setting up our system test. So under the test folder, in the application system test case file, you'll see that we have our application system test case, and that's inheriting from the action dispatch system test case. You'll also see that it is using Selenium and it's using Google Chrome. So I do want to change this because if I am running this in a CI CD pipeline, I don't want to have to worry about having the browser launching. Instead, I want to use a headless Chrome. So I'm going to just set a variable using and we can define it right up here. So we can check for an environment variable and we'll just call it CI. And if that's present, then we'll run it with the headless underscore Chrome. Otherwise, we'll just use Chrome. And that's actually the only change I'm going to make in here for right now. So under the system folder, we can create a new file. Typically with your models and your controllers, you would have a different file for each one of your controllers and you would have a different file for each one of your models. But the system tests are a little bit different in my opinion because I tried to keep them based on the feature. So I'll call this one the hello world test and we can create the file manually like this or I'm just going to delete it because there's actually a generator for this. So I could do a rails generate system underscore test and then I can call it the hello world. So that automatically created that file for me. If I open up that file, it already has the necessary requirements and the class set up. And so now I can go ahead and just start writing the test. So I'll do test and we'll just give this some kind of meaningful description. And then I can use the capybara syntax like I normally would. So I can visit our root URL. Then I can assert the text and we'll do a hello world. So let's go ahead and run this. If we did a bin rails test colon system, then it's going to run our test within a browser. And we'll see the browser pop up and it closes really fast. Well, I wasn't sure if it actually displayed the text because that browser went a bit too quick. So I can do a take screenshot and then we can run this test again to see an actual image being taken of that test. So it got stored under my temp folder and I can open this up and we can see it got rendered out correctly with that hello world. So things are working. And so even though on this same page, we have the stimulus controller for the character counter, I could put this within that same test and I could even put it in that same run. However, I don't like mixing up the responsibilities of this particular test to test both the hello world stimulus controller as well as the character counter one. So I'm going to generate a different one and we'll just call this system test the character counter. And we'll call this one should see the countdown of characters. And honestly, I found that sticking with the fixtures and with the mini tests and system tests, instead of bringing in something like RSpec, has really just made the test a lot more stable. And my hot take on it is that I don't see any real benefit of RSpec and factories over using the default mini tests and fixtures. I know there are differences between them, and I've used factories and RSpec for a long time. But as I've gone through older applications and kept them up to date, it was honestly overwhelming with the number of gems I had used in the past, and now I try to keep it as slim as possible. I found that having a very slim gem file does make keeping my application up to date much easier. If you do like using RSpec or factories, I think that's a great choice. But for my personal projects and preference, I prefer to stick with what Rails has already provided. So for the character counters test, we're going to visit the root URL again, and then we're going to assert the text. And keep in mind that asserting text is not text that's visible on the screen. If you do have some CSS that is hiding some elements, then this assertion could still return true. But we'll just assert that there are 200 characters remaining. We can then find our text area, and then we can fill it in with, and then we can do something like 
This is a test message. We can assert again, but we know that this one is going to fail. But let's go ahead and run it and see what we get as a return. If there is a failure, which we did get, then it's going to take a screenshot of the error. So we can scroll up to see that we had a failure. We can open up the screenshot and we can see that it was expecting to find the text. There are 280 characters remaining, but instead it found this text and it didn't find that 280 within there. Instead, it found 257, which we can confirm that 280 minus these number of characters is 257. So we can update our test, run it again, and then everything should pass. And so now we have our two passing tests. So now let's go ahead and generate another system test. And I'm just going to call this one the user authentications. And essentially, this is going to be testing the signing in and the signing up. So we can test registering a new user. And we can do this by visiting the new user registration URL. We can fill in our email with, and we'll just fill it in with John Smith at example.com. We can then fill in our password and we'll set it to password. And then we can set our password confirmation with password again. And then we can click on the button and the button is sign up. That should redirect us to our root path, in which case we want to assert the text. And it's going to say, welcome, exclamation, you have signed up successfully. So we can run our system tests again, and we would expect this test to run successfully. And you'll see that we actually got a failure on this test, and it's because it was unable to find the field password confirmation that is not disabled. And this issue is actually because it's case sensitive. So in my view, it's password confirmation with a lowercase c. If I were to fix that on the test, I can rerun this and now we would expect it to pass. So one thing that I usually do as I'm writing system tests, I'll have a browser open on one screen, and then I'll have my editor open on the other or do a split screen, and then I'll start writing these out. So let's go ahead and create our other test where we'll say that the user logs in successfully. And here I'm going to use a fixture. So we'll have a users, users1. And under our fixtures, we'll have a users YAML. And then I've created this one. So this relates back to the users1. And it just knows that it's the user model. I can give it an email. And we'll just do a one at example.com. And then we'll have an encrypted password. And we'll set that equal to our device, colon, colon, encryptor, digest, and the user password. So that's all we need for this fixture because it is a fairly simple device setup. So we can test on this one visiting the root underscore URL. We want to click on the sign in button. We can fill in the email with the user.email. We can fill in the password with, and in this case, I'm just going to pass in the password string. I really don't like doing it like this, but for my test cases, I'm always using that just lowercase password. And that works out because I'm not doing any kind of complexity checking on it. I can then click on log in, and then we can assert the text signed in successfully. And so let's go ahead and run these tests again. It'll launch the browser, it'll run through the tests, and they all happen successfully. But there's a real big problem here, and that is that I don't want to have to do all of this setup every single time I need to do a system test that the user needs to be authenticated. So, for example, let's say if we want to have one test if the user is not authenticated, but then we want to have another test to see where the user is authenticated. So I've just copied down the test and then I've copied out all of the login stuff that we had from a previous test down here as well. And then I'll just give it a unique name for the test. And then we can run this, making sure that it is working properly. There really isn't a good way to get around the user already being authenticated. But what we can do is to clean up our tests so we don't have this repeating all the time. 
So under the system folder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm just going to call this support. That's just a name that I like to use for anything that isn't really a test, but it's related to the test. So within here, I'll create a new file and we'll just call this the authentication underscore helper dot RB. This is going to be a module system. It's also going to be a module of support and it'll be a module of authentication helper. Within here, I could do a login underscore as, as one method. And then I'm also going to have another method register as. And in both cases, we're just going to take in our email because we're going to assume a default password, but you could enter in a password here as a parameter as well. And so what I want to do is take the registration. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into our register as. We'll replace the John Smith at example.com with our email. Again, you could take in a password if you wanted to test that separately. And then I'm also going to take the logs in successfully and I'll paste that here as well. And instead of visiting the root URL and then clicking on sign in, I just want to visit the login page directly. We can then fill in the email with the email and also the password. Again, you can pass in the password if you want to do that separately. So now on our character counter test, we don't need all of the setup code. Instead, now we can just set our user is equal to the users one. And then we can say to log in as that user.email. But the problem here is that our character counters test has no concept of what this login as is. We would just get a undefined method. So we do have to load this in. And you may have a lot of different kind of helpers under your system support libraries. So you'll need to require those and then include them. But instead, what I like to do is in the application system test case, I like calling the directory. We can then get our Rails root and we can join the test folder with the system folder with the support. If your name spacing yours a bit more, then you may need to add two asterisks. But in my case, I'm not doing that. So we don't need to add that in. But we can leave it in if we want. And then we'll do an asterisk underscore helper dot RB. So this should grab any underscore helper file that's under my system support folder. We can loop through each one of these and then we can require that file. We can also get the name of our module with a file dot base name and we want to pass in our file, make sure it's a Ruby file and then we can call camelize and then we can include that. So we can include it with our system support and then the module name. So really the way that I'm setting this up, it's not going to like having a bunch of folders within that support folder, but typically you shouldn't have too many within there. Once we get this array, we can join it with two colons and then call constantize. And so that's going to require all of the helper files within our test system support, and then it's going to include them. So in our system test, we're able to do the login as, and then the email. So let's test this out. We'll run the bin rails test system again, and then it's going through doing all the tests and it looks like everything works successfully. And just to make sure that this is going to work in our headless environment, we can run with a CI true, and then it's going to run through doing all the tests and it also works. So again, you want to make sure that your system tests are very stable, that you're able to run them multiple times. And if the tests are correct, then they should pass every time. And even on more complex applications, you want to make sure that the tests aren't getting too big. You should be focusing on one aspect and really just testing that one area. And again, we should be using the system test case sparingly as they do take significantly longer to run than unit tests. Unit tests in a well-designed application are going to be our best chance of preventing bugs. But it's also important that we don't neglect the front end as ultimately that's what the user sees. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.